Anyway, okay. Um, hello. So, yes, I'm very committed to this. I started doing a video while I was in traffic, and then I was like, this is not safe. <laughs> so, now I am stationary, um, about to go inside. But I was like, huh, let me do this, because I want to be, you know, committed and do the things. So yeah, yesterday we talked about um, build black versus buy black. And today I wanna talk about the five tenets of the build black globally movement. That kind of like undergird, these are like the, so originally when I thought through these tenets, these were the things that needed to happen almost like um, in succession. But as I've done this work, I realized it's actually kind of like this messy, loopy, overlapping thing. Um, it's not as clean, obviously, as I had originally outlined it. Um, but I needed to make these tenants because I felt like if I am not clear on the how, then it becomes very esoteric. Like, oh, go back, Globia. A really interesting hashtag and a really great, like, aspirational thing. But, like it's not clear how we're getting there and how it becomes tangible and it really was important for me that um in bringing out the build black globally ideology or not, i don't want to say ideology it's not, it's not like a cult but you know just like what it is we're trying to develop um that it was very clear and open um and like made sense in terms of how we we're getting there the journey so the five sentence uh first is build trust um then it was build network then it was build resources then build value chains and then finally build spaces and so the idea is like you know um you build trust and that was like an information thing then you build network and that was like relationships thing and then um you build the resources which is like you know knowledge information relationships and like tangibly what are the things that we're exchanging that we're bringing together bring to the table whatever then value change which is actually creating um a relationship between the tangible assets that we create so if you know if all the resources come together and we have let's say their products whatever kind of products digital physical mental products like that could look a lot of different ways then how do we fit them together so that there's like linkages and that's like the value chain and then finally it's like the space so like once we're like really you know we trust each other there's relationships um you know the resources are there they're connected how do we bring that you know these like this chain into a physical place and that physical place would be almost like a monument or a testament to all this other back-end stuff that happened um so yeah so those are the you know five tenants so the first one i uh, built so i'll just do the first one today i'll do all of the ones over the course of the week obviously um but the first one today that i wanted to focus on was build trust and I felt like the first and most important thing for us to do, you know, in trying to build globally would be how do we take away the false narratives, the false things that we believe about each other so that we can see value in um, the second thing, which would be having a network. So be relating to each other. You know, it's very true that this idea of being black is not like real outside of uh places that are not black so on a continent like africa where the majority of the people stuff say in africa where the majority of people are consider themselves let's say are black or dark skin or brown skin or whatever um skin color is like not maybe not like the most helpful form of distinction right like the most helpful form of distinction is tribal or ethnic group um, and within an ethnic group, you know, yes, it could be the case that one ethnic group is maybe lighter, darker, like it, this could, could look color, but it, obviously the most important thing is like, you know, you rep your set. So what language do you speak? Where's your hometown? Like, um, you know, what is your history? Like, 
so that when you come around like who are you are you with us are you for are you an ally or are you an enemy kind of thing um and i think that you know the way that um africans understand their identity as black people is different from the way that black americans understand their identity as black people black people in europe do and you know in the caribbean and i talked a little bit about that in the first video but the reason that that's um uh, it's important to understand that difference is because there's an assumption oftentimes when you leave the comfort of your all black space that everyone understands the rules of your blackness so for example in university it was very you know it's very common that you'll meet you know an African person who says like I don't see race I don't like color is not like a thing for me or you know this racism thing like I'm not seeing it I don't understand it because that for that person race isn't truly the issue that of, at hand for them it is a, a class issue right like in my, in my country or on the continent you know we're not fighting each other because of the color of our skin we're fighting each other because of assets because things people have and those delineations are not racial maybe they're ethnic or tribal um but they're definitely not racial so i i just like can't you know relate and then on the other hand you have you know black people who have been in the trenches in the states really fighting for racial equality and sometimes feeling like they're being undermined by you know africans coming in and having this like i love all people multiculturalism you know like i don't see race so you know there's that clash um and then what you know this idea that every black person should know about the black nod when it's only the case that you know about the black is the the black nod is an in-group out group thing it's a thing where it's like because there's so few of you when you do see each other you have to acknowledge each other it's not something that you need to do outside of that context so when i talk about building you know trust one of the really big things is understanding our difference what makes us different because if we understand those differences then we can stop judging each other for having them and just accept that as a true and real state of let's say blackness um and if we understand those differences like what makes it different being black here what makes it different being black here that's such an interesting thing like seeing value in the, that difference then when we talk about the similarities they're like oh okay so in you know uh, your country, even though most of the people are black, the people who have the most money are not. Um, so what, what, how do you, what, what does that mean? <laughs> and how do you really talk through that? And, um, similarly in, obviously, of course, in Europe and in, in, in uh, the Americas, but in the Caribbean as well, you know, like, especially because there is that make, that risk, that mix, sorry, of, like indigenous and african and then you have the indian and it, there's like a very real and tangible caste system based on color and ethnic group um and so the people who have assets are of a certain color are of a certain ethnic group are of a certain let's say caste and the ones that don't um are uh, darker let's say um and once we look at those that that similarity then we're like okay well we all might express blackness differently but the things that are similar are things that we could probably address if we, you know, came together more. Um, and so that's why I felt like the build trust is, up, is an information problem. There's a lot of information asymmetry. There are a lot of things that we do not know, do not understand about each other. And I thank God every day for Instagram. I thank God every day for TikTok. Like all the digital media that brings Lagos to your living room. That brings, you know... Um, uh, London, like Black, it's a Croydon, Peckham, whatever, to your living room. Like, I thank God that that experience is coming to the fore. I mean, obviously, again, it requires some type of, let's say, skill to be able to see that and process it as like different but valuable. But it's useful, I think. And so for me, that's why I was like, okay, I want to start a newsletter so that people can start to see what are the different things happening. And on a business level, also be able to see like what is possible with the products the people that had otherwise been discarded or seen as like maybe not useful i guess um like you know one of my favorite stories coming out of ivy john is how they're using the cocoa fruit 
to make a, a completely different drink than like chocolate, anything chocolate related. And I don't know if you've had the cocoa seed, um, you know, before it's roasted and all that. It's a really sweet, fruity tasting thing. Um, and so it's one of those things where you're like, wow, okay, so if someone is taking a cocoa seed and making a drink could they do same with like a coffee bean before it's like roasted and everything like could that be a drink or, right and like once we start seeing like what is interesting and unique happening in all these different places i think it also challenges us about what is possible with our own hands like to know that the things of our hands are the work of our hands is valuable that it produces you know good things things that are worthy like the that the world should have access to but on our terms um and and like i feel like all of that brings that trust like oh wow like you know there are black people around the world with different expressions different experiences um access to different inputs that are doing interesting creative fun unique things and i want to know and understand more about that so yeah, so that's the first tenet, build trust. And I feel like, you know, if you haven't already subscribed to newsletters, should do. Um, you know, like I said, it'll be going undergoing some changes over the course of the next three months. But um, I think, you know, the information is useful. And I would love to hear, you know, also what people want. Like, what are the set of, you know, what type of misinformation or disinformation is out there that you're like, is this true? Is this real? You know, like, um, or I'm wondering about this or how can I, you know, learn more about that? Like, yeah, like let's start to build trust in our different um, but equally valuable communities around the world. So, bye.